Hey guys, I'm Kirk. Welcome to a new series. Today we're gonna be trying out Sunless Skies again. Well, Sunless Skies just came out of Steam Early Access uh, like a week ago, roughly, and I already checked this game out in September of 2017, a bit after it came to Early Access. So. Like a year and a half ago, a bit more possibly. Uh, it's a really cool game. Uh, this is uh, connected to Sunless Sea, which is my sec, which was my second game I ever played on my channel in 2015, in March 2015. So yeah, I really like this franchise. It's awesome. There's a lot of text that you can read. The stories are just absolutely amazing. And I said, you know what? This game just came out full out of early access. I have to revisit it. So. When I first played it, it was only like one region was available. Now I think all the regions are. The fourth and final region, there you go, the Blue Kingdom. So we're gonna start a new game. We're gonna jump in it. And um, we're gonna go with Legacy Campaign, I think. There you go. Uh, aim existence, none, that's fine. Standard projectile speed, standard supply consumption, I'm okay with that. And let's jump in. A log of Her Majesty's locomotive, the Orphean, March 14, 1905. Our expedition to the domains of the dead had been eventful. The Orphean is damaged and is in grievous need of repairs and supplies. We're returning in haste to the reach where I uh, hope to make port at New Winchester. May God be with us for a thousand deaths wait in the sky. Final entry of Captain Amelia Charity Whitlock, DCM. Written shortly before her death. Hey, we have been, I guess, constructed. So, if you don't know, we are up in the skies right now. We are in the reach. Untamed sunless span of the heavens. London's new frontier, Celestial Garden, run wild. So basically, we are up in the skies. We are flying with this machine. Ooh, this is kind of cool. With this machine through the skies, and we can go visit this kind of uh, islands around here that we can uh, we can visit. Uh, okay, Captain has been wounded. That's okay. That's fine. We have over here, we have one fuel, we have one supply left. So, not good. So you want me to go to the nearest station, New Winchester. This is fine. This is this is where it's gonna begin. I guess our whole health is not the best. We have eight crew. We can scavenge around here. Ooh, look at that. We got ourselves another fuel. If you're out of fuel, well, you gotta be kinda stuck around here. There's the Ozymandias. Less fortunate even than you. We should scavenge her for repairs, the crewman suggests. The Ozymandias. Okay, the rag hangs in the sky, po poked with recent gunfire. You and the boarding party don your sky suits, garments of waxed canvas, lined with felt to protect against the cold in the sky. Two of the crew are whispering as they dress. What business did Captain Whitlock have in the Blue Kingdom anyway? Why the devil did we trespass in the district of the dead? He silence him. Now is not the time. Leap across to the rack. Let's go. Continue. Leading the way, you jump. Your stomach lurches with vertigo as the stars blaze above you and below. The air of heavens is thin and torn by unpredictable winds. Then your boots hit, hit the running board of the Ozymandias and your leather-gloved hands fumble for a hold. One of your companions throws you a line and you lash the two engines together. Only then do the rest of the boarding party follow you. One of them forces open an exterior hatch and you clamber inside. Her interior is cold, unlit, and whistles with wind. Your party's lamps spread buttery light over the narrow paneled passages. You make your way towards the hold, stepping over bodies crumpled in the corridor. Unfortunately, your way is blocked. A bulkhead has been mangled inward by a well-armed, aimed barrage. So, we can uh, clear the obstruction away. This will test your iron skill. Alright. Or we can lead your party in a more precarious path. It's gonna... Give me veils. Uh, let's go with uh, veils over here, I think. Success! Let's go. A memory. The rest of the boarding party follow you without enthusiasm. You recall the first time you climbed outside an engine, helping the captain fix a leak in exterior pipe. The wind has shrieked, buffeting at you. You ask the captain what would happen if you slip. You fall, she answered tersely. But where to, you asked. She looked down, then up, then back. 
The sky's depths smiled all about you. Away, she said, and he heard her fear. Back in the present, you tumble back into the Ozymandias through a shattered window. Your party is spilling after you, glad to be back inside. Awesome! You have reached the Ozymandias hold, a ruin of smashed cargo and spilled supplies. Hopefully somewhere in amidst the detritus, you can find parts of, to repair the Orphean and restock your stores. Alright. Two. We are renewed. You find enough food and gear to restock your supplies. Awesome. Four supplies, 15 hull. That's good. Oh no, cries one of your party, prying the lid of a long crate. He holds a cannon still nesting a straw. Another crewman pulls a battered birdcage from a pile of ruined cargo. Within the cage, something winged and furred opens a sullen eye. You examine your finds. Awesome. The Ozymandias emits a long, juddering creak. You boarding party exchange nervous glances. From the, uh, from the chaos of its hold, you have retrieved repairs and supplies. Good. A gun that could be mounted on your locomotive. And an educated bat. <laughs> Good. Mount the, mount the Jerusalem cannon on the Orphean. You can claim both this and the bat. Liberate a dividend bat and employ it as a scout. So yeah, the bat works as a scout. Uh, but let's get this thing. Fire and Fury. You now have one cutter tail, harder said Jerusalem. And let's employ the bat as a scout. Eyes in the sky, you now have one diffident bat. The bat treats its rescue as an inconvenience, it immediately begins haggling over pay. You offer to put it back in its damn cage and leave it on the Ozymandias, at which point it becomes more polite. You doubt it will last. <laughs> That's awesome. So when I first played this, uh, there was no like this tutorial-ish area, so you just started with the with the stuff. Alright, so we can press on to the engine room. You might find more fuel there, but you had better hurry. The Ozymandias begin to tear apart. All right, or it's too dangerous. So let's go over here. The wreck of Ozymandias screeches its metal buckles and tears. You press on through the shuddering corridor, searching frantically for the engine room. So we can test the uh, hearts. Forty-nine percent chance to retrieve some fuel, or I go myself and I have forty-nine for mirrors. Investigating and deducing, or convincing and let's go with hearts. Success! Let's go. A likely lad and alas, you select two sprightly members of your party and they dart on onto the Ozymandias. The rest of you return to Orphean to wait. You chose wisely, the two explorers return shortly thereafter carrying several sacks of glistening black coil. Extra fuel onwards. Awesome! We are back from the search. And we can uh, send our scout out. So basically you send your bat out and he's gonna say, hey, there's something. Successful expedition. All right, summoned by Captain Whitlock. Good. The walls of the captain's cabin are lined with a hodgepodge of curious from across the sky. Captain Whitlock lies in bed. Black marks cover her skin like monstrous brand. When she coughs, coils of acrid smoke pour from her lungs. Uh, all right. Let's approach the bedside. Now we're gonna need to open the chart. Okay, her mouth is blistered from the blue fires that dance on her tongue. Her hand grips your arm. Her skin is hot as kettle. Made arrangements. The Orphean will be yours. Her voice is just a rasp of burned meal breath. But promise. She breaks off to scream a word in a language that was not made for human mouths. When she resumes speaking English, she is weaker. Her quest lit more than a guess. Promise me one last service. Promise. Whatever it is, we'll see it done. She sings back relief. All in my will, she gasps. Be, be a better... She breaks off as the scissors burn into her bones flare, growing cherry red through her flesh and skin. Better captain than I. Alright. Continue. The walls of the captain cabin are laid with a hodgepodge of stuff, yeah. You have an engine to command. Onwards. Onwards. Uh, sure, let's open... Compass icon on the toolbar. Where is the compass icon on the toolbar? That would be here. So, we are here. He has found something out there. Good. So we can see this currently. Well. I guess we need to shoot this thing. To get through. Don't hit that. There you go. Thank you. This way? You said? Let's go this way. Oh. Hello. Who are you? I'm guessing I have to fight you. Hmm. 
I hit him. I'm pretty sure the combat wasn't like that. Last time, I should have dodged that. Got hit a bit. The Reach Marauder is defeated. Raid the remains. Strip it for repairs. Hmm. I can repair a bit. I'm not that damaged. So let's go raid the remains. Your boarding party returns with wallets and watches, cufflinks, lockets, and keepsakes. 36 sovereigns. Alright. The ghost of passing trains. Alright. I think is this where we have to be? New Winchester, indeed. Um, I need to port in without damaging my ship. There you go. Dock. Not port. Dock. <laughs> that makes sense. Awesome. So we are at the new Winchester now. You're coast into you coast into the bustle, the din, the suit, and the steam of Wolvesy Station. It's clogged with other engines, scrappy mining locomotives from Lustrum Way, weathered explorers gleaming with frost, sleek company vessels with the bright brass fittings. No sooner have you pulled into the sidings than a brusque station master bustles over. He requests to come aboard. I must speak with your captain, he insists, brandishing a ledger. The usual formalities. He has just appeared his shoulder, the doctor. He lowers his eyes. I'm guessing they're dead. The crew exchanged bleak wordless look. The Orphean itself feels suddenly more empty. The station master looks confused. You inform him that unfortunately Captain Whitlock has just passed. Ah, he says neutrally. Sorry to hear that. Very sad, very sad. He waits for what he considers an appropriate minute and a half before continuing. Alas, even amidst tragedy, the cogs of bureaucracy must turn. If Captain Whitlock has deceased, the station authority requires the answer from the first officer. He dons a set of spectacles and locates his pen. I will be relatively painless. Name, background, purpose of visit, etc. Shall we begin? Let's begin. I guess this is where we create our character then. Alright, create your captain. Street urchin, a soldier, a poet, an academic. Um, or more. How do I see further? <laughs> I'd like to see what lies there. Do I like do it this way? No. All right, well, don't know about that one. Student of Science, the Arts and Philosophy, the Pending, the Blank Monsters page, Soldier. Your way is not to reason why, your way to, to do and die. A street urchin, no parents, no laws, no masters, but also no roof over your head, no money and often no dinner. Freedom comes at a price. I will begin with high whales, the skill of evading and deceiving. This is high iron, the skill of confronting and overcoming. High hearts, the skill of convincing and enduring. And high mirrors, the skill of investigation, investigating and deducing. I think I'm gonna go with the street urchin. I think that's what I did last time I played. Or, you know, in the Sunless Sea, I know I started as a street urchin. Anyway, you were a street urchin. You raised barefoot across the chimney rooftops. You stole wigs, wallets, and purses. You made offerings to forgotten gods. The urchins of old London organized into gangs. Now, which gang were I? The Knotted Sock, a close-knit band that occupied a haunted rookery in the worst part of the city? Grease your hearts, the skill of convincing and enduring, and fillet you with villainy. The Fisher Kings, every Fisher King bears an old wound, every Fisher King talks to the wind, every Fisher King knows the things they should not know. Grease your mirrors, the skill of deducing observing, and fillet you with villainy. The Regiment, the most militaristic of the gangs, in their blue jackets and bright buttons, you attain the rank of Corporal. Increase your iron, the skill for running overcome. I think I'm gonna go with higher iron right now. Alright. Choose an ambition. What does winning mean to you? Wealth. You want a comfortable retirement? And by comfortable, you mean extravagant. Many have made their fortunes out among the stars, many more have failed. Broken and lost in the drifting night. Will you be different? Do we get our substantial re retirement fund? Acquire lodging to the hub port and retire. Fame. You'll be immortalized your exploits in the Song of the Sky. For centuries, people have launched themselves in the unknown in the hope of making a name for themselves. You're sure you'll succeed. After all, you never heard of anyone who didn't. Gather stories of your exploits and write about them in New Winchester. Or the truth. Even, in the, even the stars have secrets, but they won't keep them from you. A message from an old friend begins an unwise, unwise quest to learn a secret that the stars hide. What drives you? Curiosity? Justice? Insolence? Whatever it is, it will be tested. Be warned, this is a demanding ambition, best played by a linen that has already compelled completed wealth or fame uh, let's go with uh, fame then all right let's do appearance what is this hair sure let's change the hat Wow uh, let's go with this one is oh yeah definitely 
Let's go with this one. Let's go with that one. Nose. Well, those are weird noses. <laughs> I don't really care which nose you go for. Let's go with nose two, I guess. Chin. Like that is fine. Outfit. Uh, that's kind of militaristic. That seems like a cloak. This one. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Term of address. Comrade. Brother. Sister. Reverend. Madam. Sir. Citizen. Captain. My lord. My lady. Specialist. Doctor. Professor. Officer. Archivist. Okay, there's a lot of these. Uh, I'll go with Comrade. The name. Comrade Phobos. Boom. Alright. Continue. Okay, so. Street Urchin. From the regiment. We want to be famous. This is us. We are Phobos. Starting skills. We have 17 in iron. 10 in hearts. 10 in uh, mirrors. And 25 in whales. Let's start the game. It only took us like 16 minutes to get in here. But that's okay. <laughs> there you go. The reading of the wheel. Three weeks have passed this morning. Captain Whitlock received a simple memorial service. All right, let's, um, let's read the wheel. All right. True to her word, in a final codicil, the notary announces, Captain Whitlock confirmed that possession of the Orphean was to pass to its first officer. He appears at you with dry gray eyes. This includes a certain black box within the Orphean hold. Captain Whitlock's final request was that, at a time of your choosing, you transport said box to undress in London. Hence you an address card, and deposited there. You are not to look inside, she gave no explanation. And that's it, you're captain now, the Orphean is yours. Awesome. You can investigate the black box in New Winchester, you could take the box to London as requested, or you could sell it and be done. You have been bequeathed a large black box, you have gained a hundred sovereign. Alright, onwards. Officer's mascot. Uh, and you have an officer, perhaps a mascot. You need to formally appoint them before you can benefit from the skill, abilities and ML charisma. To do this, open the officer's panel while in the port. Cool. Alright, uh, let's see, so we are at the Wolvesy station. Uh, let's go to officers. You officers, use the, this tab while a port to appoint them or anytime talk to them. Yes, good. So, do we have a first officer? Any officer? No, we don't have any. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. We can go uh, explore the city, recruit the driver. Uh, I'm like, I like the idea of having a driver. There's an uh, inspector, investigate the black box, follow your ambition, the song of the sky. Repair your locomotive, hire on extra crew. Uh, we can hire some more crew, yeah. But first things first, let's go recruit the incautious driver. Okay. I specialize in test drive, I'm looking for something quieter. The drive indicates a crashed engine still smoking, like that, without the screaming. <laughs> okay. This will give us chief engineer who increases your R by 6, your R by 2, and your affili affiliation establishment by 1. Uh, how much? 20? I'll do it. Join the crew. Good stuff. Uh, so now we should have a chief engineer. Let's go. Uh, I don't know what this means if I give them to that. That's okay. Might be the, the mascot. Okay, back to Wolsey Station. Uh, let's explore... Let's go to this fastidious inspector. Let's see what he wants. Excuse me, Captain. The woman pushes through the crowd towards you. She's short and square-shouldered, in a neat black suit and polished shoes. She shows you the case of her pocket watch. It's em embossed with the crown and hourglass of London's horological office. The body responsible for ensuring time is consistent across the Empire. I'm hoping to pack a passage to Port Prosper, she says, slipping the watch. I can, of course, pay. Uh, you know what? Pay sounds promising. Alright, thank you. The locomotive I was on broke down following a boiler rupture. The chief engineer's fault, I suspect. The gentleman founder of Brandy Den of Diligence. Here, initial sum of, to seal our bargain. Okay. So, uh, Prosper lies to the west-southwest of New Winchester. Okay. That's good. So, we got an inspector that's traveling with us. Doesn't take any cargo space or anything. Gain some money. That's good. Alright. Um, you know what, this this thing we need to get to London. I don't want to open it up, I don't think. Don't, we could repair it. Let's repair it a bit. Fully repair. It's gonna... 
It's gonna cost nine sirens. Yeah, let's do that. Fully repair that. That's okay. It's not too bad. Uh, we could hire on some extra crew. I don't think we need to right now. We're fine. Let's explore the city a bit. Okay, so we can learn about trading. All right. Learn about trading. A porter at the station advises you to visit the nearby pub. The promise of days and talk to the seasoned captains there. They keep their ears to the ground. They'll know about an opportunity or two. The promise of days. All right. Visit the promise of days. There's a Winchester war as well. All pistons gleams on the wall. The shelves are crowded with mementos from across the sky. The clientele raised their voice to be heard above the comforting clamor of the adjacent engine yards. So I can introduce myself to the seasoned captains. Or go elsewhere. We can't do this one. Because I've not acquainted myself. Okay. Let's acquaint myself. Forget at the their usual table. The masked citizen, a libertine polymath and pioneer of the neo-nocturnal artistic school. The bedeviled di didact, a scholar haunted by his discoveries. The plucky baroness, explorer, collector, philatelist. And spatchcocker mag, who hunts monster. Wow, these names. <laughs> Of course, everything out here is jolly dangerous, says the Baroness. Few risk the skies, so news of this import is valuable. Collect port reports from the places you visit and deliver them to Victory Hall or Company House. The more you turn in at once, the more they'll pay. So yeah, this this is the same as in the Sunless Seas. You would do these port reports and get some money that way. Or, you know, opportunities along the way, passengers and uh, stuff like that. That's cool. Any, uh, how to make uh, my fortune through trade? Ah, the deck says, finding with his innumerable talisman. Fiddling, an essential tea topic. Max slides you a stool and the captain shuffle around to make room. The mass citizen buys you a drink of, uh, of their own invention. It's violet and foggy. Okay, ask away. How can you buy and sell goods? Well, just buy and sell them, I guess. You can sell practically anything in a big trade hub like New Winchester Venice. But if you want to buy though, you'll need to travel more distant ports. Yeah, this is this is fine. Nothing special there. Do you have, do you know of a good prospect? The host of Magdalene needs an urgent delivery of seeds. Paying a pretty penny too. If I were you, I'd get to the bazaar straight away, put my mark against it. Looking at Port Avon is selling cheap seeds. Chirpy cheap, good knows why. Okay, so it's an opportunity. Port Avon lies to the south southeast of New Winchester, and Magdalene lies to south southwest of New Winchester. So if you go to buy uh, seeds at uh, Port Avon, mm, all right, let's go to Bazaar. All right, uh, I would like to go to Bazaar. Seeds for Magdalene. I will do it. Claim. Okay, literature literature for traders wood. I'm gonna need some literature. I'm gonna chill with that. Okay, we're not gonna be buying anything right now. All right, so we, let's pause. We are gonna continue with this in the next episode. For now, I hope you enjoyed it. Next time, we're gonna go do some exploration, traveling, and all that good stuff. But for now, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider dropping a comment down below. Should like, subscribe, and see more doing magic. And I'll see you next time. Cook her out.